Hi everyone and welcome to Curly and Yarny. My name is Milena and in today's video uh, it's gonna be a very chill and relaxed video so I won't uh, bombard you with lots of tutorials and info. Today I just want to have a chat with you and show you what is going on currently on this loom. So let's get started! So first of all, as many of you know, last Saturday, so Saturday, February 12th, I hosted my first YouTube live video and I just wanted to tell you more about it in today's video. And if you've missed the live, don't worry, it is available on my channel and I will link it in the description down below if ever you want to watch it. So it was a very fun experience, I really enjoyed doing it, even though I have to be honest, I was very nervous beforehand and I was nervous the whole time. <laughs> That's quite a big learning curve for me doing this because it was pretty different than um, than doing like the normal videos that I do. Uh, I had to, I kind of learned a lot of stuff on the spot on how uh, this is working with YouTube. So I tried to get prepared beforehand, but <laughs> there were so many things I didn't know that was accessible, some kind of perks and stuff like that, that I kind of worked as I went there. So for the next lives, I will a bit be more prepared and really know uh, what is going to happen. I was very nervous also because I ha it was live, you know, when I make my weekly video, I have control over everything. I have control over the content I make. I can cut when I start to stutter. I can cut when I'm trying to find my words in English, but on the live you cannot do that. So that was stressing me a lot to think maybe if I don't find the words, if I stutter a lot and <laughs> I don't want it, it to still be good and don't have me hesitate so much on the words. So I think this was okay, but that was something I was very, ner I was very nervous about. I also didn't know what to expect with the live chat and I was nervous to see how can you uh, get keep this interesting while reading the comments. So uh, my solution was to have Kevin there. So uh, my uh, partner was there with me, he was behind the camera, but he did say a little hi <laughs> at the beginning. So if you're curious to see uh, my partner, you can see it in the live at the beginning. <laughs> a little teaser there. <laughs> but thank God he was there, so he was monitoring the comments and getting them all in a word file and then every time that I was stop talking he would show me a comment or a question that I could respond to so I was very grateful I got him because I don't think I would have been able to go through all of the question uh, while hosting the live at the same time. I think this is something that would take me a few lives to get more comfortable with, especially because I was very nervous, <laughs> as, as I keep saying, but it, it, like, I don't remember the last time I was this nervous. And then I was so nervous to the point that at the beginning I was trying to read the comments and there's some point where I'm like really struggling, you can see it in the live. I just read gibberish, like I cannot make sense of what I'm reading and then I started to panic a little bit but I got hold of myself after that. If ever I misread one of your comments, I'm very sorry. <laughs> Kevin was there, as I said, to monitor all of the, most of the questions to make sure that I answer all of the questions and um, I was I knew that I had a lot of other comments afterwards and I couldn't uh, read them all while doing the live. So I was very happy when the live was finished to be to go back and be able to uh, read all of the comments. And there's one of the big things I learned while doing the live after that. I thought that once the live was finished, it would be already available on YouTube exactly in the same format. But I realized that the video was available but not the chat immediately. So the way I understand it, and if you are uh, acquainted with YouTube Live, please tell me if my understanding of this is right. But my video had to be processed, but while being processed, it could still be available. But during this process, the YouTube kind of shut down the live chat so nobody could have access to it. So YouTube has to process my video to make sure that I didn't go against any of the guidelines. So for example, I didn't use any copyright music during the video. So this happens with all of the other videos, but not one that is already up. <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of weird for me and I started to panic because I thought well if the video is out there and there is not the chat then it's not worth watching it because the chat really makes the video but uh, after a many hours so I don't know exactly how many hours it took but I know that the next morning on Sunday morning when I woke up the chat was available so I was able to rewatch the video and uh, acknowledge all of the uh, comments I got there so I really want to take a second to uh, Thank everybody who was connected, thank everybody who actively participated in the chat. So I took the time to read all of the messages and it really touches me, it really warmed my heart. So I got a very, like a, a huge amount of love <laughs> and appreciation from this. So I felt like on a little cloud for the whole day. <laughs> so thank you, thank you again so much. So I just want to go back on maybe one comment where somebody said, yeah, Kevin looks like the sweetest human being and he really, really is, but he's mine. 
<laughs> and he doesn't have any brother, I'm sorry. So he's already taken, I'm really sorry, he's mine. Something that really amazed me uh, while going through all of the comments in the chat was how, if, how I had people from all over the world joining for this live. So I find this amazing that we have this worldwide weaving community. So that's something I was super happy about. And I, a lot of people were from North America, so from the US, from Canada. We also had quite a few uh, people from Sweden. And I feel like I need to do a shout out to uh, the person from Melbourne who uh, joined in, even though in Australia it was super early in the morning. So they told me it was uh, 6 a.m. for them. So wow, that's some commitment. So I'm very, very uh, impressed and touched that uh, they connected this early to uh, join the live. So thank you again. Now, let's jump to the other subject of today's video so uh, let's talk more about weaving so let's talk about uh, what I have currently on this loom so on this loom it's not a real project it's simply a, simply a simpler something to uh, try different things so what happened is that as you know I have a sectional beam on this loom and uh, I'm having some struggle with it so uh, it's a love-hate relationship and in uh, on my on my videos about the weaving series where I was weaving scarf on this uh, I told you a little bit how I was warping it, which was really not conventional. It worked, but I still had some uh, problems with uh, thread skin tangled the way I was doing it. So basically, in a nutshell, what I was doing, I was making little bundles of warp for each, each section, then attaching them to the loom, rolling them in, and uh, once everything was uh, on the loom, I would start doing the threading and slaying the reed and attaching. So it worked. I was able to do quite a few projects with this, but I was having some a uh, lot of issues with threads being tangled so I know this wasn't optimal and I knew it was taking me way more time than it should so I wanted to look for uh, different options so because the sectional beam usually we should use a tension box and also a spool rack and I started looking into this and even use it was very very pricey and I felt like there was just always something else I needed to buy so I needed the, the tension box uh, it's better if I were to buy also the thing that would count on how many yards of yarn I was rolling so the contention box with the yarn counter, then I had to buy a spool rack, then I also had to buy like big bobbins on which I could put the yarn on and then I would need to buy a bobbin window so that I could put the yarn on those bobbins or, or else I could do it differently but then I would need to buy so much yarn in order to have for example if I wanted to weave something that would have 24 ends I would need 24 different bobbins so that makes like a lot of <laughs> that was just always piling up and always new things I would need to buy to do it properly in a way I would work and I just couldn't see an end to it so I changed my mind and so I decided to try something else instead so I decided to buy a rattle kit and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna try and this is what I did there try to work my, my loom with a rattle kit during the back to front method so um, there's a still a lot of things that I need to work on but I know it's possible because I think I've seen somebody do it before and so I want, I, I'm sure it's possible, I just need to figure out exactly how to do it. So, for, so far, it's wor it seems to be working, but I really want to weave the whole thing to see if it really is a good solution. And I have some bundles that are well, I have some other bundles that look tangled. So I'm not fully 100 convinced, I'm not fully 100 sure I did everything the right way. And I couldn't find anything on YouTube about it, so I'm really just uh, doing trials and error here to try to find a, how to make this work. And if I cannot be satisfied with the result of it, what I'm going to do, as somebody suggested to me, I just, sadly, I know, <laughs> I'm going to take off the sectional beam and just uh, keep weaving like it would be a normal loom uh, for that. But I hope I won't have to come to uh, this alternative so I'll still have some hope with this method so this is a learning warp and it is also going to be a learning project so uh, I I wanted to try something new in the pattern something I find very pretty and I would like to try uh, for a bigger project later on probably a scarf or more than one scarf so I wanted to try point uh, threading so a point twill and again I took out my Bible the hand weaver is pattern directory by Anne Dixton and I uh, wanted to do the, the draft that could be found on page 81 at the very well at the very top here and later in the project I would try doing the different uh, thread links so I would try to do the three patterns and maybe try something else just for fun so it started out great so I started my uh, threading the heddles and I was following it like every new thread I would look and make sure I had the right one so the beginning was fine the two first inches 
perfect. And then I got overconfident, so the eight other inches, I didn't look in the book anymore. I was like, oh yeah, I got it, I got it. And I should have, so I was overconfident and I messed up. So in the point wheel here, we have a like two diagonals that go each way and then we have for me I, I consider it like a little triangle in at the bottom so this is where I messed up so the right one it would be to put one thread into the one two three two one but in my mind the way I remembered it it was a bit higher so it was two three four three two so let me show you what happened on the loom Alright, so let's see the disaster. So this is what it should look like and this is where I messed up. So if I open the book, so I was doing the, the first pattern here, so the first uh, drafting here with this straddling there. So for the first one, it looks pretty similar. I think I got that one right. But then here, really, <laughs> it is a disaster. <laughs> so now the next thing that I will have to do, it will be to unweave what I have already woven, deattach my warp, and then redo the threading there. So because the problem is generalized, I feel like I'm gonna have to do all the eight inches that are wrong so I need to figure out a way to um, do this without messing everything up so I don't want my threads to get all tangled so that's something I'm gonna have to really think about and how I want to do it if you have any tricks please let me know I was thinking of maybe scotch taping some of the threads so that they will still keep their order and when I'm gonna use them to re-thread I'm simply gonna detach them from the scotch tape one by one so I'm not sure if I'm gonna do this but this is something my first uh, I did the top of my head. I could also, I don't really have to unweave everything, I could just cut this and reattach later on, but uh, I kind of don't want to, I don't want to lose the, the length because I want to, uh, that would be waste and I want to have as much length as possible to do my different tests when I will be weaving, so this is why I'm going to unweave everything. So wish me luck if you have any tips or encouragement, I will gladly uh, welcome them, that's for sure. <laughs> so I'm also taking the uh, opportunity of this video to tell you more about what's coming in the upcoming weeks in terms of uh, video content. So uh, I have uh, finished the uh, towels that I wove in the last two uh, normal regular videos and I want to sue them and so I'm going to try all the tips that I got on my video, my other video about sewing dish towels and also all the tips I got from my mom and try to uh, sew them even better. So <laughs> that is coming up. Also, uh, I haven't forgotten about those towels. So I don't know if you remember them. I wove them last year on this loom right here and I used different fiber or different kind of yarn in all of the towels. And I wanted to do a fiber exper experiment after that they had been used. So this is coming up very soon with the move. It took longer than I thought because I had to, um, I had to fight to get them back. Some people didn't want to give them back, but I said, it's for science. You have to give them back. We can discuss later on if you can have them later. So <laughs> I'm going to do this experiment also uh, very soon. So uh, stay tuned for all of that. So uh, again, uh, thank you for joining me today in this video. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and I hope to see you very soon. Bye-bye.